Hey, good evening. My name is Scott McCutcheon. Welcome to episode two of my uh, Yamaha Virago project. Um, today, we're uh, just going to go ahead and get started masking up all the parts and uh, doing the prep work, getting ready for paint. So I figured since I have all the parts disassembled, paint seems like a good first step. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get everything all cleaned up and... and uh, ready to make it look good. So let's get started. Now that we're prepped, taped up, and ready to paint, uh, you know, we're pretty much ready to paint. So let's go ahead and get it started. Um, we're gonna go move everything over to the, uh, um, into the paint booth that I've got set up here. We're going to do this outside so that we're trying not to, um, you know, smoke out my roommates with uh, all the paint fumes, um, if there is any. I don't know. This will be my first time painting with an actual uh, high-pressure, low-volume air spray gun, so that'll be kind of cool. I'm used to painting things with just rattle cans, uh, but let's uh, get everything set up and do the thing. Okay, uh, so now that we're all set up and ready to go, we're going to get started spraying. Um, like I said, we're going to be using a high pressure, low volume air spray gun, um, which is this stuff right here. Uh, I uh, just picked this up from Home Depot to do this project. Um, I've always been used to using rattle cans before. Uh, but we're not going to do that this time for the Virago. We're going to go all out and try and get a professional quality paint. Um, so for that, we're using uh, this KBS Coatings motor coater. Uh, we're going to be doing everything here uh, is going to end up in gloss black um, from KBS. And, uh, and then we're going to do the tank itself in um, flat black, also from KBS. Um, so... Uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this video will be good for, uh, I'm gonna pop this off the frame. Um, right. So th this video should be good for uh, um, anyone who uh, has never done this before because I've never done this before. So we're gonna go through and kind of check out exactly how this works, um, how to put one of these guns together, how to clean it, uh, when we're done and how to get a good spray for it. All right, so uh, let's get started um, All right, so this is a a, uh, a gun set that I literally just picked up from uh, from Home Depot um, You know, so it's all brand new um, So we're gonna go ahead and go through and uh, You know check out how this is going to be put together, how it's going to get used, um, and all that, all that good stuff. So as you can see, it comes with um, <laughs> comes with some cleaning tools, uh, so we can clean it up when we're ready. Uh, a couple little nozzles. Um, one thing I don't like about the case is that when we put these on, they're going to be hard to put back in because there's no cutout for those nozzles. So that's annoying. But thanks, Home Depot. Uh, either way, so one of these guns is your um, high pressure, low volume. I think that's the standard one. Um, yeah, so high volume, low pressure, um, HVLP gun. So these are supposed to be the bee's knees. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, it does the trick for us. So. It should be pretty easy to put together, but let's go ahead and look at the owner's manual and make sure that we know what we're doing. Um, since that's important to do, right? Uh, specifically, I'm looking for the controls, right? Here we go. Um, okay, so this would be your pattern knob. That's going to go from elliptical paint to more like dotted paint or a you know fine spray um, this is your fluid knob control I assume that dumps more or less uh, paint through the gun 
and then your air knob control allowing more or less air pressure into it okay pretty simple nothing uh, nothing too far out of the ordinary it looks like you can um, turn this cap you know uh, different directions to um, you know to get different uh, patterns of paint um, but it looks like we're gonna want something like that you know it's evened out down the gun so that when we're going left to right right because it's a pretty good elliptical uh, pattern spray pattern is what we want and there's some instructions on cleaning it up but we'll get to that when we're ready um, okay so looks pretty simple right um, the idea being that you pop this piece off and your tank and your tank would just kind of pop on right there yeah um, you'll dump your paint fluid in there obviously um, so this kit comes with it so we're gonna go ahead and use it may as well right um, this good stuff this would be your generic Teflon tape thread seal kind of tape um, which is obviously good for sealing threads assuming you can assuming you tear it correctly Right, and make sure that it's got a uh, clear hole there. And we'll pop this guy back on. Now he's well sealed. Um, and you can just hand tighten it. You know, they provide you a. Uh, looks like they, Home Depot has provided a. A wrench of some sort um, to do all this with, maybe, maybe not. I guess they expected you to do that one on your own. Not really sure what the fuck that's for. Um, all right, so down at the bottom, uh, let's go ahead and grab some more Teflon tape. But down at the bottom is where we're going to be looking at this guy, your pressure regulator. Um, or, yeah, full pressure regulator. Um, that way we can adjust the pressure to the gun directly on it rather than closer up by the air compressor. Now my air compressor already has a pressure regulator on it, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, you know, as you can see... My uh, mine already has one here, um, but we're just gonna roll with two, so that's fine. Um, so we're gonna pop this guy directly on there. No big deal. Yeah, right? So they did provide a wrench of sorts. Um, just pop that guy on there. So now you're going to have a uh, pressure gauge and a knob here that can, uh, you know, more, more accurately adjust your pressure um, than this one here, I assume. 
So of course, you know, the kid doesn't say anything about that. I have no idea what the fuck these are. Um, no clue. Oh, that's probably this. So you drop this in here as a paint filter, right? Um, boom. Just like that. Now you have a paint filter. Okay. Last but not least, you need a way to connect it to your air pressure hose. That'll be here, and it'll go right there. Um, get a little more Teflon tape. For the end of this guy. I'm apparently not very good at this. And there we go. Alright, so your air inlet. Unlock this guy on there. And we'll be all set. Um. Alright, so as far as connections, that's what you got. Um, and again, this one, uh, make sure I don't forget myself, right? This one's your pattern control knob, give you different uh, elliptical patterns. Fluid control knob to pour more or less fluid in there. Air control knob, more or less air. And then now you're, it's not shown in here obviously, but you're going to have this uh, air pressure regulator control um, so you can define how much PSI you need. Um, obviously right here it says do not exceed a maximum air pressure of 40 PSI so don't do that. Uh, ideally, I don't know if it says it in here, but ideally you're going to want 25 to 30 PSI at the gun. Um, you know, so that way you're getting uh, as much uh, good spray as you need. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and power this guy on. All right, so air compressor is ready to go. Uh, and at this point, we're ready to paint. Um, so I've been told that before you start painting with a brand new spray gun, you should probably clean it, uh, i.e. running some solvent through it. Um, they say this because, uh, you know, these things come with a type of protective coating on the inside, you know, so that when they are sitting on the loading dock for a real long time, you know, they don't uh, get rusted or damaged from just uh, sitting there. So they've got a coating on the inside that's probably not good for paint or you don't want to be spraying with your paint. Um, so they say it's probably a good idea to uh, spray some solvent through it. So I've gone ahead and bought some KBS thinner, right? Uh, to go ahead and use with the KBS motor coating. So we're gonna drop a little bit of this in here. Um, and I don't think we need a lot. Uh, you know, just a tiny bit to start with. Um, that should be good. And drop this in. Um, and then let's spray it out. And here you can see we have up to 100 PSI. Um, and there we are letting out the pressure that's coming from the tank.
there we go all right so we got 100 psi there at the uh at the gun i was wrong you must not want 30 or 40 i don't know how you would even get it down there um either way there's your spray and obviously that's the uh uh the paint thinner going through it You can see when we're spraying, it's down near 40 psi, which is about what we want. And then there's how, okay, so there's how you would turn it down. So we don't want it while it's spraying to be over 40 psi. We want it somewhere like there, 35 psi. Right? Okay, so both of those would adjust that spray. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is pop out the paint. This is the gloss black from KBS Motor Coatings. Uh, got this off Amazon, I think it was 25 bucks for the uh, pint. And I got two pints to do all this stuff. Um, I, uh, I don't figure that two pints uh, will be more than I need. I don't think I'll need more than two pints for this. I guess we'll find out. I'm going to be kind of disappointed if I do. Um, but, you know, whatever. So let's load this paint into the gun. And we'll see what we're working with. That looks pretty good. So, I'm just going to, have it, going to go ahead and just fill it up. I figure I'm going to use all this paint today, at least one pint. Um, so I've got the other pint ready to go. But, uh, we'll use it if we need it. Okay, um, hold on to that real quick. All right, let's do it. So, first things first, when we put this in, Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the longest hose. It's only about it's a, it's a six foot hose, so I'm gonna have to kind of deal with it with my air compressor. If you uh, before we get any further, a note, a quick note about the air compressor. You'll notice mine's a tiny one. Um, it's got 125 psi max. It's only three gallons. It's nothing huge, right? But it is gonna move the amount of air that you need for the paint gun. Um, so anything smaller than this, I don't think is gonna work so well. But this should be big enough for most of your average home needs. Um, you know, so I think it's a pretty good compressor for this purpose. Um, but either way, so I kind of wanted to get a quick view of what the spray might look like. So that's what we're starting with, um, which I'm not a fan of. So we'll adjust this a little bit to see if we can get something better. And we'll see if we back this out all the way to the left that's the uh, that's the spray pattern that we're gonna end up with um, I'm not particularly enthused with that uh, so we're gonna turn the nozzle here 90 degrees so that we get a more up and down spray right like that um, and then we're going to back this in a bit so that we get a more solid spray, something like that, All right? Um, I don't want it quite as circular, so we're going to back it out just a little bit more. 
can get that. Right? So. I feel like that's pretty good for what I'm going to be doing. That should just about cover it. Um, so I like that. Okay, I think that's good. So now that we've tested it out, we're more or less ready to paint. Um, so just before we get started, just so you know, uh, I think this is more or less all the parts that I need to be painted. Um, I'm sure once the bike's together, I'm going to see something small that I missed or skipped, and I'll be kind of annoyed by it, but we'll get to that, <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. As far as the tire is concerned, um, I'm, I didn't tape it off, mostly because I figure, um, I figure that I'm going to end up getting these tires replaced anyway. So I'm not super worried about painting on them at the moment. Um, but uh, everything else is taped off, masked, and ready to go. So um, let's get started, right? We'll start with uh, these parts over here since we're near them. You want to do just quick motions back and forth, similar to as if you were spraying with a spray can. Okay, so we're pretty much done with the gloss black for today. Um, I don't think we're gonna need it anymore. We've done all the coats that I think we need. Everything looks pretty good. Um, as you can see, we still have a little bit of paint left, but that's no big deal. Um, what I am gonna do uh, is run some thinner through it. Um, I'm going to put some thinner in it so that, you know, this thing can clean itself up, sort of. And then we're going to try the uh, flat black for the gas tank. Right, so we've used all the gloss black, um, and now we're going to go ahead and use the flat black. Same stuff, KBS motor coater, just in flat black. Um, we're only going to use this stuff for the tank. Uh, so let's go grab the uh, grab the tank itself. As you can see, I've already sanded it down, pulled the gas cap off, and uh, you know more or less gotten it ready to go. Um, didn't figure it was going to need a ton of sanding. There was a small dent here that I figure I should repair, but I'm not going to just because it's so small. Um, but hopefully it won't be that big of a deal. And in part because I don't have any Bondo. Um, So, spray this, wipe this down a little bit before we spray it.
boom. Okay, uh, so with the flat black, since we're only painting one part, it's definitely not going to take a whole pint to do that part. But I definitely want to do uh, at least two coats on it, probably more. Um, simply due to the nature of it. I mean, being the gas tank, it's probably going to be one of the most visible pieces of the bike um, at all times, right? Uh, so, as you can see, I've already gone to the trouble of cleaning the uh, the gun with some paint thinner from KBS. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and drop some in here. I'm probably only going to use like half of it, kind of like that. Um, you know, mostly because I don't think I'm going to need. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need the whole thing. I don't know what I did with the uh, cap. Um, what did I do with the cap? There it is. So that's flat black. Um, and before we get spraying this one, because I sprayed gloss black through it, um, Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how to clean the gun. Um, for the most part, uh, you're basically just going to run thinner through it. Nothing special out of the ordinary. Just dump some thinner into the gun. Let it kind of soak up the whatever paint's left over in there. Um, and then, for the most part, you're just going to dump it out. I kind of give it some time to break up that paint. Either way, cleaned out the gun a little bit. Um, I'm going to want to fill her up. Give it a good shake. Help clean up that uh, barrel. And then you usually just let it spray through. Um, that'll help clean it up. You know, and spray that thinner through the gun so that everything gets, uh, you know, all the lines and everything get cleaned up. If you feel like you've gotten it pretty clean, you can go ahead and stop. Um, and you can see that that thinner has done a number on the inside of this jug here now at this point you want to go ahead and uh, take the jug off the gun you, know, so you can wash it a little bit better um, it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but you do want to get it clean to the point where, you know, it's not going to be gross to reuse. You are going to want to reuse this at some point. Um, the filter itself, I think you could probably throw away. 
you don't need to re you know you don't need to keep the filters um, now the gun itself cleaning this this guy up becomes a little bit different um, if you don't have a parts washer it, with a parts washer you could just you know dump the gun you know wherever you need to in your parts washer uh, and uh, get it all cleaned up right but here since I don't have a part washer um, what I'm gonna do is just fill up the sink a little bit with it And then you're pretty much done. Not much to it. Um, it's a uh, pretty great, uh, pretty great tool. I'm happy with this. Um, I'm not super enthused that it's not going to fit back in the case with all this shit attached. But whatever. Thanks, Home Depot. Um, but whatever. Uh, HPLV. Um, you know, uh, or HVLP, high volume, low pressure, um, you know, that guy seems like he did a pretty good, uh, or wh whoever designed that, uh, did a pretty good job engineering it. It's a, it's a, it's a real good gun. Um, you know, so it definitely did the job here. Um. But yeah. Okay, so we are uh, we're gonna let that dry for a little bit. I'm gonna go eat lunch, and then uh, we'll come back and see how everything turned out. Okay, uh, we're back. I've finished my lunch. Let's um, let's take a look and see how we did. Uh, all these parts look great so far. Um, I'm digging it looks pretty good I can't really at the moment tell much of a difference between the gloss black and the flat black um, but I suppose we're not gonna worry about that so much um, for now so uh, let's go ahead and get the stuff inside and we'll uh, see what's up okay so uh, so now that we're all cleaned up uh, and everything's back inside Let's go ahead and take a look at the parts and see how we did. Um, hopefully, this uh, gives you some, still gives you some good light. I uh, I feel like that turned out real well. The the motor here, um, you know, we can start popping these off, right? You know, so that's gonna look pretty good. I'm not gonna go do the rest for now. I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, but that looks pretty good. Uh, the tank turned out pretty good too. Um, not too shabby. Uh, I had a little spot here where some water hit it while it was trying to dry. And that didn't turn out great, so I might have to do something about that. Um, but otherwise, sharp, not too bad. Um, you know, the frame turned out, turned out real nice. Uh, can still read the VIN, so that's good. Um, that turned out real good. All these bits and pieces turned out great. All black, 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 black. So, all in all, everything, everything worked real well. Um, the only problem I experienced... Uh, was when I was cleaning the gun I uh, I totally trashed this gauge right so inside the kit Home Depot has these uh, air pressure regulators um, a pair of them and that's fine and dandy they're actually real nice uh, you know right right up until the point um, that I got paint thinner on it and while I was cleaning it I guess I should have taken taken it off before I cleaned it but um, you know the paint thinner got on the dial or the face of this uh you know the gauge and totally wrecked it so it ate through that plastic uh so be careful with that 
if you get one of those kits. Um, but altogether, it was pretty good. I, uh, I think it turned out real great. Um, so, so I think it, I think it's going to work out real well. I'm pretty happy with how all the parts uh, came together. Um, you know, every, everything looks great. Gloss black, flat black, tank. Um, you know, all that stuff is real good. So, pretty happy with that. Thanks for watching. Uh, I know this was a long one. I'm going to try and uh, cut it down, but you know, this is uh, how we get started on this Virago project. So. Um, as we uh, go forward to the next episode, episode three is going to be uh, basically putting the frame back onto the motor, or really, well, episode three is going to be about getting the carburetors and stuff back on the motor, and then the frame back on it, and then we're going to go ahead and get the forks put in. So that'll be episode three, putting the forks back together. And you can see over here, I've already picked up the uh, the forks itself. So these came from a, uh, I want to say 2016, maybe. Uh, well, 2008 to 2016, that generation. I'm not sure exactly what year it came off of, but these came off the like a 2008 GSXR or not a GSXR. I'm sorry, Yamaha YZF R6. So that's the front clip from a from an R6. See, I got the handles and stuff over here, um, and then this is the rear shock uh, from the R6 as well. So we're gonna try and fit this guy into the back of that Virago. Um, there's the front triple tree. Uh, so luckily I got the key from the R6 too, so that'll be nice because I was missing the key from this Virago. Um, yeah, so, uh, right, so that'll be, uh, that'll be that. Um, I guess uh, that pretty much does it for now. Thanks again for watching, and um, we'll catch up with you next time. Have a good one.